Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A Ha. Are you here? Whoa! Good morning, fellow Woodward. No, mathematicians, welcome back to Navi. Ow! That hurt. That wasn't even planned. Nice comedic timing. Thank you very much. Fucking sock. Yeah, crashing right with my face and the glasses into my piece of metal that I got here. Sounds like a lot of fun, right? <laughs> Speaking of woodworkers, God. My, my heart. <laughs> nice transition to my other channel. I just now posted a brand new episode of Mathematics for Woodworkers over there, where I apply a mathematical theorem to some applications. It's a fun episode, my most favorite one up until this point. Check it out. Link down there in the description. Same for stemmergeu, stemmergeu.com, and my personal tea string shop. Great deals going on over there. Links down there in the description. So today we are going to take a look at this equation. 1 to the x power being equal to... Uh, hold on, bitch! You were just now calling me a bitch, okay? That, that's a dialogue between father and son and daughter. Um, no, 1 to the x power is always 1. This is what they told us in school. Thank you very much for watching QED. I see you next video. QED. Ciao. Um, no, obviously not. Um, at schools they are going to tell you, yeah, 1 to every power is equal to 1. Obviously, 1 squared is 1. Uh, 1 to the 57th power, best prime is is uh, 1, 1 to the infinity of power is 1, obviously. But 1 to the x being equal to negative 1, is that even possible? And I can tell you so much, it's a complex process, but the real answer is going to surprise you very much. And now we are going to <laughs> type right and fucking dead jokes. Never mind. So at first what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the number 1. What is the number 1 exactly? Obviously it's the multiplicative identity. 1 times anything is equal to the anything. Okay, but also it's a complex number in disguise. Every real number is just a complex number, believe it or not. Okay, just a tiny little recap. Okay, complex numbers. So we got some real x's and some imaginary x's. And on the real x's we can find all the real numbers. Our best friends pass, square root of 2, e. Okay, and also the multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity lies on here, the number one, nice, fine, there on the real axis. And remember, each and every complex number set can be expressed as either a plus ib, real plus imaginary part times r, or we can e express it in polar coordinates, namely r times e to the r far, where r is the length, the magnitude of our vector in the complex plane. In our case, for the number one, it's going to be one, obviously. Okay, from zero to one, we have a unit of a distance. Okay, that, this makes things easier. And also, our far that we have up here is the angle being enclosed, so-called argument, by our real axis and our complex vector. What is the angle being enclosed by our vector one, okay, and our real axis. Hmm. It's, it's zero. Okay, hmm. Hmm. it's zero. That's not good. But then someone can come around the corner and say, bitch, it's not only zero, the angle. Obviously in the complex plane, we define rotations, okay? Complex numbers are just operators. Meaning what we can do is we, we can say, okay, why not rotate our vector one, okay, once around the whole complex plane, it's a 360 rotation, meaning 2 pi, giving us number 1 once again. Okay, that is cool. But now, around the other corner, could someone else come and say, bitch, no. I want to go around once more, okay? I want to go around twice. Oh, this lands me at number 1 once again. I'm terribly sorry that I called you bitch. We are still at 1, okay? We both are 1. Okay, that was a rotation of 4 pi. Now, some, some other guy can come around this corner, for example, and say, bitch. <laughs> So many bitches. We don't go counterclockwise here. We boys and girls go clockwise. I say, okay, go clockwise. I don't care. You can go this direction too. Okay, what's this rotation? It's negative two pi. And so on. Meaning that the number one can be expressed in infinitely many different ways as a complex number. Namely, the number one is the same as e to the r. Now, what is the angle exactly? Hmm. Obviously, we got pi in here. What else do we got? We got 2, 4, 6, 0, negative 2, negative 4, etc. Those are all the even positive and negative integers, meaning they are of the form 2 times k, where k is element of the positive and negative integers. And this right here, ladies and gents, is the number 1. And we can plug it into our equation that we got up here. Meaning, 1 to the x power is the same as e to the r 2 k power 
to the x power. Now by using exponentiation rules we can track the x down here, meaning this is the same as e to the r 2 k par times x. Now what about the number negative 1 on the other side? Can we do something about negative 1? Well, same logic applies here. Now if we take a look at the complex plane yet again, take a look at the number negative 1, it's in the, neg in the negative direction basically of our complex plane. Once again it has a magnitude of 1, meaning this thing is of the form e to the r far once again. So negative 1 is equal to e to the r times some, uh, some angle. Let's take a look at the far. Okay? On the one hand we can go par as a rotation. This is called Euler's identity. e to the r par is equal to negative 1. Okay? Kind of beautiful to some people at some point. But this is only one way. We can go around the other way. Okay? Negative par for example. Or we can go around one and a half rotation, meaning this is going to give us three pi and so on. Meaning the number negative one can be expressed as a complex number at all times as r times pi and then 2n plus 1. All the odd complex, uh, <laughs> all the odd positive and negative integers where um, n is element of the positive and negative integers once again. So we can plug this into here e to the r pi 2k plus 1. And now we can actually solve for x. We can start comparing our exponents that we got right here or we are going to take the complex logarithm on both sides giving us overall, okay, in any way e is going to cancel out, e i times 2k par x is equal to r times par times 2k plus 1. Now we are going to notice a few very funky things happening, namely our r's are going to cancel out. Okay, I can't believe my r's, the r's are going away. That's crazy, meaning it takes the real value. It's going to make sense in a second. Now, also, the paths are going to cancel out. So it's not even <laughs> rational or something like that, transcendental. We can now solve for x safely. Maybe x is of the form 2k plus 1 divided by 2, no, 2n plus 1. We called it n here. I'm terribly sorry. Um, 2n plus 1 divided by 2k. Yeah. And that's it. This is the form that our x takes on. And if we just take a look at the principal branch, principal meaning on the first rotation. Oh yeah, by the way, k must not be equal to zero. So our k is actually element of the positive and negative integers without zero, obviously, otherwise we can't divide by it. If we take a look at the principal branch on the first rotation, then what is going to happen is our k Hmm. On the first rotation, zero isn't a value that can be taken, obviously, in this equation. So going around once, we are going to have that x must be equal to, okay, down here we are going to get a 2. And up here on the first rotation, we are going to get um, zero as our n, because we just want to have r par, meaning one half. So how does this make sense? How is the square root of 1, you could say, equal to negative 1. Well, it does make more sense if you take a look at it like this. If we take our original equation, 1 to the x power being equal to negative 1, and take the x root on both sides. Okay, if we take the x root, our x up here is going to cancel out, we get 1 over x here, meaning we get 1 is equal to negative 1 to the 1 over x. And now obviously you are going to notice if we plug 1 half into here, x equal to 1 half, we are going to get that negative 1 to the 1 over 1 half, obviously negative 1 squared is going to give us 1. It does make perfect sense and on the principal branch this makes even more sense. But you can take any branch you want, okay, n being equal to 5 and 2, uh, k being equal to 3 for example. Then you are going to get some weird power that you are going to get up here, something fractional and negative 1 to the fractional power then you need to take the principal branch there to get yourself 1 out. But yeah, this is basically it. This is 1 to the x power being equal to negative 1. And you can go through this process with any other or number that you want up here. Let's, let's call it r. It can be each and every real number. The process is still the same. You are going to take a look at the rotation in the complex plane as long as it's on the um, real axis basically and then you are going to be good. Even if it's a complex number, it really doesn't matter. The process is still the same and it's very easy to do, but it's a surprising fact that some of you might not have known up until this point. And I thank you guys for watching and if you did enjoy this video, then why not make sure to subscribe to the channel, become a follower and support the channel this way. Don't forget to, don't forget to check out the Great Deals, 
going on over on stemage.com, stemage.eu, etc. I'm still very confused about the first initial intro here in this video. And until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao. Oh, please stay safe.